Hello, hello, it is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool and I am so excited you guys are here with me because we are going to talk all about some fun, some, well summer, <laughs> some fun winter art ideas, um, open-ended art that you can do in the art center or for a small group, um, even like a rival kind of table time. Um, so just tons of fun winter art projects that you can do um, during these cold months or just the winter season if you're down south where it's not super cold but colder than your summer. So there's links to all the things wherever the links are. Um, there's a blog post with um, the templates for a couple of the um, projects I'm going to show you. So um, you can go grab that when it's done and we're just going to jump right in and get started. So before I forget, um, your easel. Don't forget about your art easel. Um, when you're doing different themes. It's super easy to add a little bit of inspiration um, for your little learners. So I like to use the back of like calendars. Like this is like a winter scene. It's from a calendar. Like you could just, I don't know if you can see this, I'm gonna pull it over a little bit. So I have my easel routine over here, which that's free in my store. Um, get a smock, put on a smock, get paper, write your name, create and put it on the drying rack so we can work to being independent at the art easel. And then on this hook, I usually keep um, names of all the students so they can use that to help them write their name um, if they need some extra support. And then I have these little clips. I make sure they're ones that are super easy to open and close. Um, they're just some like cheapo chip clips. Um, or you can even use clothespins. Um, but I keep an extra one over here at the end and I literally just plop up a little picture for inspiration. Now, do they have to paint that? Absolutely not. They can paint whatever they want, but this may kind of get their brain thinking or make them, you know, think of something like an experience or a memory they had and they want to paint that. Or maybe they can just think about that as they're just exploring and painting at the easel. And then if you're wondering, this is just a piece of border and I cut it and I tape it to the back so that way my short little friends can clip on their papers independently. So you can just clip those to the side. Um, in my full day classroom when I taught in public school, we had like a little a black cabinet right next to the easel. So I would keep a whole bunch of photos that they could kind of clip on. Um, like just kind of stuck to the cabinet and I could switch them out. They could switch them out. These are just some like Google images laminated on cardstock, super simple. This is like a beautiful snowy tree, a polar bear. This is a big old snowman. Um, again, to just get those, um, maybe they have never seen snow or maybe they don't, they've only remember seeing snow a couple times. Um, if you don't want to print these off or you don't have any calendars, if you have my stem, I can build, you can always cut this top part off or you can literally stick that on there too. And then I usually switch out my color. So I'll have like white, blues, and maybe purples at the bottom. And that's, that's it on the colors for the easel. So don't forget about your art easel when you are doing all of your fun um, winter art. Okay, so the first project that I wanna show you, I think I have like 10 or 12 maybe projects. So the first one are these beautiful coffee filter snowflakes. So the students take a coffee filter. Oh, where's my scissors? There they are. And they can just fold it up. Now, if you teach three, four, and five-year-olds or even kindergartners, they're not going to fold it up and make anything super fancy. They'll probably fold it up like once or twice and make cuts on the side. They usually don't make a cut on the outside for whatever reason. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, and you got a little snowflake. Um, these are some a couple of kiddos did and they're gorgeous. You can hang them up on the windows. Um, they'll have the light shine through. There's a couple different things, you, way you can make them these beautiful colors. So one thing you can do is after they cut them, they can color them with markers and I usually just put out the colors I want them to use um, and then what they're gonna do is spray it with water and 
And I wonder if you guys can see. Obviously, I didn't spray the whole thing, but you can see the colors kind of mix and they'll blend. They won't be as dark as this one because I use liquid watercolor for this. Um, but the, if you want them to color, or maybe you don't have access to liquid watercolors, put out some markers with your coffee filters and they can color them that way. Or they can cut their snowflake. I'll just make one super quick here. Okay. And then what you can do is have out different colors. So this is kind of, this is a blue, purple, and then this is green. So I actually use the teal and green and kind of mix it together. So that way there's three different colors. We have our snowflake. This is a crazy looking snowflake. And then they're just going to drop the colors on there. And using these droppers, it's great fine motor problem solving. They're gonna watch the colors mix. So we're sneaking in some science, um, cause and effects. So again, just super, super simple using those droppers because droppers are tricky to use. And I like to use if you have the colored ones, if not, um, to because the liquid watercolors, if you look, they you can't tell which color is which. So if you don't have a dropper with a, um, a top on it, you can just put some colored tape around it so they know, because like if th three kids are using the droppers or something at once, they're not going to know which one to put it back into. And then your colors are going to get mixed up, which is, they'll get mixed up a little bit. But it'll just help them kind of match which one. And you can also put a um, piece of tape on the cup, too, if you have more than one kiddo using it, which you probably will. But look how pretty that is. And again, great fine motor. And we're also practicing using those science tools in um, the art center. So super, super fun little coffee filter snowflakes. And again, either way you make them, super, super fun. And when they're using the spray bottle, it's great um, fine motor too. Okay, so I'm gonna keep out, let me move this over here real quick. Uh-oh, I think I'm out of trays, hold on. So I'm gonna move this out of the way real quick. So we're gonna pretend like that's and I have paper towels. Okay, so you know how icicles, they kind of drip as they melt? So you can do icicle paintings. I know some people do this, and I've done this at the art easel before, um, but if you have little learners, especially if you have three-year-olds or you have kids with like that are very impulsive, um, you're gonna end up with a big puddle. So take a binder or if you have like a block, anything that's like an incline and put it on a tray because this tray is gonna catch all the water. I also like to put out if you have any um, like icicles, um, like I have these I use at the light table or in the block center, those are fun to put out. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make icicle or dropper art. So they're gonna take the piece of tape and they can tape it on. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, on these, I usually, you can see the one has an N. Um, we usually write their names in um, black Sharpie, so that way they know who's is who's. Forgot to tell you that part. Okay, so what they're gonna do is they're gonna drop it down. Like how fun is that? And they get to watch the path. Now, if you don't wanna use like water, um, cause this is again, liquid watercolor, um, and if you don't have watercolor paint, this is just like regular art paper, um, but it doesn't dry as pretty. You can also water down actual like tempera paint, but how fun is that? And they get, do you see how I made a drop and it didn't go all the way down? So they can slowly, slowly drop and look, that one joined the other one. Like it's really fun. And look, oh, that one, it's just, it's really, really fun. Great problem solving, cause and effect. Again, we're sneaking in science because this is like kind of a, how does an inclined plane work? Super, super fun. And again, we're just doing all this in the art center. And again, we're just making icicles on in the, in the, in the, in the art center. So you can do icicle painting. And again, if you want to, I know a lot of people do it at the easel, but I did it once at the easel and I had this giant puddle of colored water and I was like, never again, <laughs> never again will I do it at the easel because I just have, kids are impulsive and that it happens, right? 
So, I'll put this over here in case I need that for something else. All right. Now, I know you guys all do frozen paint. So what I did was I put regular washable paint in an ice tray. Oh, I should have taken it out. I let it melt while I was waiting to go live. <laughs> okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it out and then you're gonna, you can either put it into like a little cup There we go. So if they melt too much, so it's kind of, you have to find a sweet spot because if they melt too much, they're stuck. But all you do is literally just put it back in the freezer and it will refreeze for you. I, um, and if they're super, super stuck, like these were, <laughs> um, you can run some hot water underneath, but don't let them melt too much. Otherwise they'll be stuck in there. But again, just add some more paint Put the stick back in there and let it um, let it refreeze. But then you got all the colors. Get my purple. Oh, there is my purple. So freeze it. And that way, too, once they melt, you can even put two in each one. Like here's the orange. Like I have two orange. You can put two. It kind of contains the frozen paint. But now we have frozen paint. And again, literally regular washable paint. Crayola, Discount School Supply, whatever paint you have, put it in the um, ice cube trays. Oh, I did put a like wooden spoon to kind of like tilt the sticks up a little bit um, so they wouldn't be so slanted. But if you don't do that, it's fine too. But look, how much fun is this? And look, do you see how I have to turn my wrist and I'm moving my elbow as I paint and glide and skate? You can pretend these are like ice skating um, on the paint. Now, you can use every color of the rainbow or you can just use winter colors. You're the teacher. You decide. You're the boss. You're the boss of your classroom. But how how much fun is this? And look at all this great rainbow to work. Do you see how I have to move my wrists and manipulate the stick to move it around? Oh, woo, so much fun. Again, freeze the paint. You're ready to go. So fun. And then just put them in some cups. So, frozen painting. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> now, I love to paint ice. And oh, also, I, I like wash these and use them, by the way. So. <laughs> Don't think I always like get out new cups. Unless I forget to wash them, then, then they can't get it off. They can then they go in the trash. But you can soak these and you can walk, like use them again and again and again. And I love them because they're clear. Okay, so we're gonna grab some different colors. Now you can make these, again, winter colors. You can do all the colors, but I suggest doing, if you wanna do different, like not just winter colors, I suggest doing a cool tray and a um like a cool color tray and a um like warm color so that way when the ice melts and the paint melts together it doesn't turn brown because if you use like red orange yellow and pink they'll all blend beautifully and make all different shades and um shades and tints of all the different colors um, and then if you use the cool colors, then they'll all mix beautifully together as well. So, okay, just poked myself in the head with a brush. Super. <laughs> so you get out some paint brushes. Hopefully you don't hit yourself in the head like I do. And then they are literally just going to paint the ice. It's a very relaxing activity. This is great to do as an arrival activity um because you'll all of a sudden hear them get quieter and quieter because it's just mesmerizing to watch the paint on the ice or you might seem you're really really excited oh my gosh this one's going over here and this one's melting and oh my gosh this one is melting and coming over here now let's say you do this for arrival time and it's only 15 minutes put it in the yard center and then they can keep painting during center time 
because the ice will melt and as it melts, the color kind of drips off um, or just soaks into the ice if there's like a crack and then they can keep painting. But make sure you use a tray with a pretty good lip, otherwise um, you'll get a puddle. Um, but how gorgeous is this? Also, you have if you have um, inside recess one day, this is a great indoor recess activity because it's it's it'll get them kind of up and moving. You can move the chairs away from the table so that way they have to like stand up and do it so they're using all their muscles. Um, and then they can just paint all the ice. And again, you can do a cool colors tray and a um, warm colors and you'll get different effects. Like Monday, do cool colors. Tuesday, do warm colors. And it's really, really fun. Also, if you have a sick kiddo at home, <laughs> um, this is a really fun activity to do because it's cold and it'll help kind of get, um, you know, it's not hot. So I always, um, when my kids were sick when they were little, I would give them like an ice sensory tub to play in or they would paint ice, something that was cooler to kind of, it's nice and calming and cold. <laughs> so paint all the ice at school and at home. So now we have snow. So if you have any science pictures of snowflakes, like I used these last week at the, um, at the light table, or laminate them though before you use them in the art center, but put these out in your art center. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make different shades of blue and then they're gonna paint with the Q-tips. Um, if you have like circle time or maybe like you have a couple kiddos in the morning, cause I, we had like kind of like an hour arrival time when I taught full day. So um, we, they slowly came in. So some of this is really fun to do with the kids because it's great science activity. So I have white in each of these cups and we're gonna make different shades. So one, you're gonna add a bunch of blue and then you can even have the students help you mix it up. And they can guess which one do you think is gonna be the darkest. And then have one with like a little bit of blue and a medium amount. And again, have them mix it because look at all this great fine motor that's happening. And you can mix it or maybe you read a book about snowflakes and you guys, it's super quick. So you could even do it whole group. And this, if you have kiddos who are not excited about going to the art center, this may get them excited about going. So after they mix it up, then you have all of these beautiful shades of blue for your, so they can paint the snowflakes. Now you can't see it on the cup, but look how pretty. <gasps> okay, I spilled it. <laughs> Again, that's why we laminate the stuff we're gonna put in the art center because it gets paint on it and that's okay. So, <laughs> let, me, let me wipe up that. Okay. All right, so we got like a darker blue, like a medium. These are two lighter ones. So you can put these in the art center and then give them some white paper. Here's one, um, a kiddo made. Probably had no name on it. And all they're gonna do is make snowflakes. I got more paint on me. <laughs> make snowflakes. I wonder if I could prop this up so you guys can see. There we go, okay. This one really wants to spill on me. And then all you do is um, put some cotton, cotton swabs in each one. And then they can make little snowflakes. Maybe they're gonna make dots. But if you have these photos out, they may notice that, you know, some have, whoops, lots of lines on them. So they may make lines on their snowflakes. Um, they may just make dots. Again, they'll just use the pictures to kind of guide their, their art. And then they'll turn out like, they can paint snowflakes with Q-tips. Okay. All right. 
Let's see if I cannot spill more paint. <laughs> Now this one is one you guys probably know and do often. This is like a tape resist activity. So what you're gonna do, throw in things everywhere today. You can take out those different shades of blue that you made or you can make more. And if anybody is wondering, these um, paintbrushes, they're the Crayola paintbrushes. I just, I really love these paintbrushes. Um, there we go. Now you can see all the different shades. So basically you take tape and you make a snowflake. You can make it as fancy or as simple as you want. And the kids are just going to paint over it. Okay. And then I like using different shades of blue. So that way it's all different. And then once the tape is dry, you peel it off. Now I wouldn't wait until it's like super dry to peel it off. And you can put out white, just like plain white and put that on there too. Um, but, and you can also literally take your cups from the easel too and put them out for art, it's up to you what you wanna do. Um, but I wouldn't wait till it's super dry to peel it off because sometimes and it depends on your paper. Check your paper before um, before you do like a whole bunch of them with your students because some paper, the, the tape does not, it does not pull off really easy. So let's see if I can do it wet. And I used actually just regular like art easel like paper. And why don't you guys tell me in the comments, if you've done this, what paper have you found that works well um, in your classroom? And do you take the tape off when, obviously not when it's this wet, I'm just doing this for the video for to show you guys. Um, but do you take it off when it's wet or when it's dry? Cause see that, that a little bit came off with that one. But there we go, we have our beautiful um, snowflake. Obviously we wouldn't have had it like so messy if you take it off when it's a little bit more dry. Um, but yeah, but how pretty is that? So pretty. And it's just a really fun way for them to explore and mix the colors. Again, we're doing open-ended art. It can look however they want it to be. They can make it all one color solid. They can really, really mix up all the colors. Um, you can also add a little bit of texture to your paints, like add a little bit of baking soda or flour, and it'll make them thicker and give it more of like a texture, kind of a snowy texture, which is really, really fun to do. Um, so yeah, so that's a really, really fun one. So try that in your classroom if you haven't yet. All right. Okay, this one is simple and also fun and stuff again over here. Okay, so this one is just watercolor, oil pastels, and I actually just usually, I'll tell you what I want. So you do oil pastel, watercolor, and then this is that um, coarse salt. So what they're gonna do, a piece of paper. I also forgot to grab a cup of water, but you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna improvise here and use, yeah, let me wake up my watercolors. Um, you can also use a spray bottle if you need to get all the watercolors wet. Works great. I wouldn't put it out for the kids to do. Um, I usually teach my kiddos how to wet each paint, but for the sake of time, we're gonna go slow. Um, so you can do this a couple different ways. So you can give them the entire color palette. I typically cut off brown and black when I have the watercolors out for different activities. Um, and you can use all of the oil color pastels. Or I also have a set of oil pastel, or watercolors that I have cut up kind of into like warm and cool colors. So I can just put out the cool colors and you can just put out like white um, oil pastels. That's what we're gonna, I mean, we're gonna try that um, real quick. So what you do, or what your students will do rather is 
they will paint whatever. Oh, I forgot. They can draw with the oil pastel first. I'm just going to scribble. It'll be easier to see. And then they are going to paint over it. And they'll see their beautiful drawing that they made. Now, if you have itty bitty learners, let them scribble. You can say it's a snowstorm. It's totally fine. Um, let them just paint or draw whatever they want. And honestly, scribbling is really great, especially like in Missouri. Like my kiddos have been having inside recess a lot because it's um, like it's not enough snow. Like there's always like a dusting lately and it's not, like enough where you can't go on the playground, right? And what you do is when it's, you wanna teach your kiddos to make it super, super wet, almost where there's puddles on your paper. And then you put the salt in the, in the watercolor, in the puddles. And what it will do, let's see if I can show you guys. So you can see I painted my, my snowstorm with the white and then I have all these crystals, which is the salt in the paint. Well, when it's dry and you brush it off, it will have these little, almost look like snowflake looking crystals that have dried in the paint. Because what happens is the salt um, soaks up the color. So it kind of crystallizes um, the paper and it's so, so pretty. So again, you pick. You can do just oil pastels, all the colors and salt, or you can make it winter colored. Again, up to you. Um, at this point in the year, if you, maybe if you haven't introduced watercolors yet, this is a great time to do it in the winter because you can make all the beautiful snow scenes with um, the, the salt. Got, of course, I got paint on all the things. <laughs> um, or you can do it a couple days with all the colors and then maybe the, um, the, the end the second half part of the week, do just the winter colors. So, cause I, um, I usually do one activity out in art a week. Um, and that is like kind of like the, the there's always one new choice in art every week. And maybe this week it is watercolor, oil pastels and salt. And the first half of the week, I have all the colors out. Maybe the second half of the week, I do the winter colors just to kind of mix it up and keep it um, exciting for your students. So always a fun one. So raise your hand if you love smash painting. I know my students always love smash painting, but we're going to do this time with a twist. So I have this mitten pattern. And if you go to the blog post up at the top, um, this is, if you fill out the form at the bottom and it will be sent to your email. So what you're going to do is you are going to fold it in half I forgot my little bottles over there, but I have a whole set of these like little bottles and they all have paint in them. So I have these little bottles of paint. They're from Discount School Supply. I'm sure Amazon has them. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put out the little bottles of paint. I love my little bottles of paint. So you got all your little bottles of paint and what they're gonna do is squirt out a little bit of paint on the mitten. And as they're squeezing, it's great fine motor for them to squeeze. And they have to shake it down if there's not a ton in there. I usually don't keep my paint bottle super, super full. So you don't need a lot for this um, smash art activity. So they're gonna put it on there and they're gonna fold it in half now, if you have little itty bitty learners, pre-fold the papers in half so that way it kind of folds easy for them. And then what you're gonna do is they're gonna flip it over and they are going to smoosh. Now, as they're smooshing, look at all this great fine motor. They're actually using their upper shoulders as well, whoops, as they smash all of this goodness. And then look what happens when you open it up. You have these mittens that match. Now, this mitten doesn't have a little bit of, oh gosh. And just so you know, this is like glitter, silver glitter paint. Um, you could put out white too. 
maybe they want to put some paint up here in the corner. So they can put a little bit more on the spots that didn't have paint and they can fold it back over and smash, smash, smash. And then they open it up and they have two mittens that match. Now, once they are dry, like this one's almost dry, you can cut them out, put a little string or a ribbon on them, and then you can hang them um, like in your classroom. And they have a little matching um, pair of mittens. And it's just a really fun open-ended art that you, it's basically a smash art that you cut out at the end. So open-ended art that you cut up and make super cute. So really, really fun. And again, if you want this mitten printable, um, go to the blog post and the link will um, put your email address at the end at the bottom and we will send it to you. Okay. All right, this one, this activity is a classic. So I'm sure you guys have done this one. So it is the cookie cutter art. Now, my favorite way to do cookie cutter art is to do it on a giant piece of butcher paper. And they just press and stamp all over the place. Because I feel like when they have one little piece of paper, unless they do a ton of stamps, it ends very, very fast. They do stamp, 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 and they're done. But if there's a huge piece of paper, they can stamp. And I just found these um, snowflake ones, snowflake cookie cutters. You can use whatever winter ones you have um, if you don't have snowflakes. Usually, um, at, like I always get my snowflakes at Target after um, the holidays. They usually have them on clearance. I'm sure you can get a set on Amazon. Um, you just grab them and also don't forget to put out a little. Now, I love glitter. So I always put out a little bit of glitter. These are just little salt shakers that I have. And they have glitter in them, so they can sprinkle it out because the if um when it's wet, it will stick. So really, really fun. And again, do it on a giant piece of butcher paper, but don't throw it away at the end. Cut it up into however many pieces for how many many however many kids you have, and give it each kiddo one piece of that giant um, piece of butcher paper. So that way, a student every student can take home a piece, or you can also stick it. Um, in their portfolio for social skills or art because they had to work together. They had to share the materials. They had to share space to create the project. So you can put it in under either, either objective because again, when you use one giant piece, when you're, you lose one giant piece of paper, they have to share materials. They have to share all of it. Okay, let's do... That's two. So this one is really fun. If you've never done wax paper art before, you have to try it. It's really fun and it's gorgeous. It's a really easy way to make those like tissue paper art that everybody has in um, in their like in their windows without having to use. Um, contact paper. So basically what you're going to do is you are going to cut out some snowmen from wax paper. And then instead of using glue, you're going to use liquid starch. And as you can see, like, um, the tissue paper melts kind of into each other and it, the colors blend and it's beautiful. This is not like color blending tissue paper. This is cheapo tissue paper from like Target, Walmart, from somewhere like that. Um, so liquid starch, buy it from Walmart. That's the cheapest place you can get it. It's like, I think it's expensive to buy on Amazon. That is a lot. You don't, definitely don't need that much. <laughs> um, so I have this one kind of started, so I'm gonna keep going. So you just take a paintbrush and what they're gonna do is they are going to put some liquid starch on the snowman and then they will kind of put the pieces of tissue paper in it. Now, how did I get these beautiful colors of tissue paper? I literally bought just some packet <laughs> at Target. 
got the colors out that I wanted and I just cut it up into kind of square-ish shapes. It's not the same. It's it, They're not all equal. They're not perfect. It's fine. They don't care. They're kids. They just know that they get to paint and play and explore and make a snowman. And um, I did put purple in with mine, so it's really fun. But, okay, I am like a mess. Well, I guess art is a mess, so that makes sense, right? Um, but, okay, it's dripping all over. But do you see how beautiful that is as they're making it? It's so, so much fun. Okay, so again, wax paper, liquid starch, tissue paper. That is it. That is all you need to make these beautiful snowmen. Now, you could do, you don't have to do just snowmen. You can do them for any time of the year. You can also do all the colors just on like a piece of square piece of, of this paper, of the wax paper. You can make it summer themed and do warm colors and make just like a, like a big sunshine, some, whatever you wanna do. But it's so fun. You gotta try this one. If there's one art activity you have to try from this video, it's the snowman. They're, they're my favorite. Okay. And then this is how I have the activity. This is how I keep it. If I, okay, I tried to make one with two body, no, make three. <laughs> That's my, I messed up. But if you have any extra snowman cutouts, any extra tissue paper, I literally just put it in a bag and keep my, my, um, my example, put it in a bag and then I put it in my snowman theme and now I have this ready to go for next year. Well, at least I have a start, right? I may have to make some extra, but at least I have kind of a, a jumping off point. So I don't have to completely make everything new. So there is that. And again, I also had just some um, like big pieces too. If you just want to do big pieces and then you can cut out the snowman afterwards, that works too. Be ready to do some stamping. I told you I had a lot of ideas for you guys today. Winters, winter art activities are just so fun. It's all the beautiful snow and all the colors. So we are going to make snow marshmallow snowflakes. Now, do they have to be snowflakes? Absolutely not. They can make a winter scene. They can just stamp. They can make snowmen, whatever you wanna do. Anything you want to do. This is the one um, a kiddo made. Now, I know you're thinking, Jackie, marshmallows are ooey gooey gushy, and that sounds like like a hot mess. Like I don't I don't think that's going to work. Don't worry, I got you covered. Okay. I also keep my paint in these giant, like what are these like condiment things? So, in my art cabinet, I have a whole bunch of snack food, and. It's old. So if you have marshmallows at your house that have gone bad, don't throw them away. Keep them for your classroom. Okay. Because you can see I also use these to make shapes. So these are just some old marshmallows I have because, listen, they're not, I mean, they're a little gushy, but not really. They're not really super gushy. So take the marshmallows. Now, if you don't have any hard marshmallows, leave them out overnight or for a day or two and then they are ready to be used as paint stampers now see i have all these for another day and then i have a little tray and i have all my snowballs and then they can have i can't really see when i do up there some blue paper and again if you have pictures of snowflakes put those out And they can just stamp again are they do they have to make a snowflake no clearly mine is a hot mess so it's fine and they can make big ones they can make little ones and look i'm having to use my pincer muscles as i stamp maybe they're gonna do a whole bunch and go crazy whoops again whatever they want to do it may end up looking like a snowstorm and again that's fine we just want them to explore all different kinds of art media and different ways um, different things to paint with different art art techniques 
explore line and color and texture and shape. But look how fun that is. And if you wanna make if you wanna make it textured, again, add a little bit of baking soda or flour and it's kinda of, it'll kinda of be that different texture. So that's really fun too. Just a kid plate, some hard marshmallows, and now they can make a snowstorm or snowflakes or snowmen. Whatever you wanna do. You pick. I have one, two, three, four. Six, six more. You ready? Okay. You know I love my little my little paint bottles. So these actually have metallic paints in them. Um, do you have to use metallic paints? No. You can use regular paint. But so what you're gonna do is take a little bit of. I want it come out. Oh, because that one doesn't have the lid off or the. The, um, there's a piece of paper, so it can't come out. Now, if I was doing this with kiddos, I would have this each on a plate. Now, if you're like, that's wasting all these paper plates, I also have those clear plates that I use at the light table. Um, you can also use those clear plates instead of plates like these. Um, for all of your art things. Now, I have some cut up cardboard, you can tell we have used these to paint before. So what you're gonna do is they are gonna kind of use them like stamps and they can make snowflakes. They can twist them, they can scrape them. There we go. And they are just going to stamp. They kind of look like fireworks too. So we do this for New Year's. <laughs> But it's really fun. And again, we're just using a different technique. You could also, you know, those credit cards you get in the mail um, that you probably put in your dramatic play cash register. shirt. You can use these too. This is not my card. It's like one of those fake ones um, that you get. And then they can just stamp and make their snowflakes. And it's really fun. You can use it on blue paper, do it on white paper. You can put out glitter. So they can put glitter in it. Really, really fun. Obviously theirs is gonna look much more awesome than mine, but so, so fun. And the end, by the end of the day, it will get a little like mushy, but instead of throwing this whole thing away, what I'll do is I'll just, cause I usually, again, like I said, I use the same art activity kind of all week. Um, so I'll just cut this bottom part off and then I'll use the rest, but just use any like extra cardboard you have. Any cardboard will work because you can tell mine has been painted a little bit and that's okay. Now, if they end up doing this, it's fine. If they make really cool snowflakes or maybe they just wanna like mush the paint around and they then they stamp again, that's okay. Because guess what? They're little and they're exploring and they're having fun. Even though maybe they're not expressing what they're thinking, there is wonderful things happening in their brains or maybe they're just noticing how oh i like i like how this is smooth or i like how it smears glitter because you, you can never have enough but how how pretty is that again you'll have kids that'll do this you'll have some that'll make snowflakes you'll have some that may just make a whole bunch of lines all over it that's fine too again we're just exploring and having a ton of fun with art I used a whole bunch of plates on next time for that one. Okay. So this one is one that you probably know and have seen. So it's the classic melted snowman. I typically put all my pieces in some kind of tray. I also love using, I got it out to show you. These trays, they're from the Dollar Tree, so is that one. Um, to put your art supplies in. Um, you'll see these a lot on my blog or in photos from my classroom. I'm not teaching this year, but when I was teaching, I used these all the time. They're great because you can wash them, put them, put them in the dishwasher, super great. And they wash really easy. Or if you like let them soak and you forget that they soaked and you leave for the day, it's fine. They won't be hurt. And if they break it, they're only a dollar. Well, dollar 25. So 
They can make a melted snowman. I just have some cut up ribbon, eyeballs. I have a circle punch because I can't handle cutting circles. So I have some circle punches I use for all of my little things. And then I just cut some brown cardstock for the sticks and then noses. And then they just put it on. Now, how do you make this puffy paint? Oh, and of course there's glitter because it's me and I have to have glitter. So you're gonna take glue and shaving cream, put it in a bowl and you're gonna mix it up. And then I like to put out kind of like a bigger brush with it. So that way when they're kind of scooping it out, it, they can kind of they can kind of use the big paintbrush like a spoon. I think this is really like a meat or like <laughs> like in the kitchen. But I have like five of them and I, they're great for like a big paintbrush. Um, and then they can paint it on. Now, if if um, if you overmix this, it will kind of fl fall flat, and you can't make a bunch of this at once. Um, so just know that. So shaving cream, glue. Mix it up and then you get some really fun melted snowman art. Super fun. So that one. Now I know a lot of us read snowman at night because I mean, how can you not read snowman at night in the winter months? They can make their own snowmen at night. So these are some that kiddos drew. And this is black paper and construction paper. Sorry, that guy was upside down. Um, now, if, if they don't like to use colored pencils or maybe colored pencils are frustrating for them, get out some chalk. This is just like one probably like a half a box of chalk. And then I have the other half in another little plastic tub. These are like those food containers. And I break it up because that's great for their, um, to develop their pencil grasp because they can't fist to grab it because there's, there's only that little, they have to grab it with their fingers and then they can draw their little snowmen with the chalk. So if color pencils, or maybe they're frustrated because especially if they have like weaker fine motor, like the, they won't be able to make a lot of marks with the color pencils on the black paper. So use, use some chalk. And if this paper's too big, cut it in half. And then they can use a half sheet. So to continue with our snowman, um, take, you can either give your kids a half sheet of paper or a full sheet, put out some circles, put out a tub of shapes. So this is actually our always in my art center. It's shapes that I've just kind of cut up or if I have extra paper um, or if a kiddo isn't using all the paper, um, I literally like cut it up real quick and then I put it in here and there's some like foam shapes in here too, those like little ones. Oh, there's an eggplant. <laughs> um, and I just literally put it in here. So we have a whole bunch of shapes. I put out the shapes. And I usually, again, put it in the little tray to make it more appealing. And I have these circles. Um, I just drew them on, um, and I, like, I literally just probably found a lid and drew them and cut them all out. You can also, um, like, print them out, whatever you want to do. And then your kiddos can make snowmen with the shapes and markers and little circles. But how, how fun is that? Like it's a great little collage, markers, snow, snowballs, super, super fun. And it's simple, you guys. I think sometimes we make art into being this like way over the top. It always has to be paint, which I love paint, but um, it doesn't always have to be paint. You can use just collage materials that you already have in your art center and just set it up and make it look appealing with just by putting it in some trays. And now you are ready to go and they can make some little snowman, but how, how cute is that? I love it when kids make stuff for me in the art center because then I get to keep it and I have examples to show you guys. And I've had that one for probably like 10 years maybe. 
I had this guy like a very long time ago, but oh, just makes my heart happy when I see their artwork from forever ago. All right, I have three more and then that's it. So I love ice and you know, I love to do dry erase on foil, but did you know you can paint on foil? How much fun is that? Now, if you're wondering how the paint sticks, take your paint, put a little bit of dish soap in it. It won't color it that bad. Um, take a little bit of dish soap, put it in there, and it will stick better to the foil. You can use a bunch of colors. You can use winter colors. It's totally up to you what you wanna do. Um, I do love the, um, at the Dollar Tree, or at least, my Dollar Tree used to have them. Um, they're like sheets. So they're kind of like these pre-cut sheets of foil. Make it easier for me. Right? Now, you can also cut these in half. Or if you have like a giant roll of foil, you can do that too. But literally, put out some paint. Put a little bit of dish soap in there. And they can paint on foil. You can cover the whole table or make the roll go all the way down and they can just paint and just enjoy and just have fun and enjoy um, painting a giant piece of paper. So, paint foil. It's also really fun too to make pastel colors um, and paint on the foil because everything in the winter kind of um, is like a lighter shade because all the snow is on everything. So make a set of pastel colors and like little cups and then they, with the dish soap, don't forget the dish soap. <laughs> and then they can make their, um, their foil painting. So try that. So this is for a hibernation theme. This is what the end result looks like. Okay, so um, I have this freebie for you guys. This is in the hibernation post, but after I'm done with this, I'll go add this to the winter thing. So that way it'll all be there for you. So you can grab that freebie. Um, so this will be there for you guys. But this little, it's like a little bear. Now, it can be a polar bear. <laughs> it could be like a hibernating bear. You pick. Mine's like a hibernating bear. Pin it on white paper and it's fuller bear. Okay. And then I took some like grocery bags and I kind of cut them up into an oval. Okay. And then what you're going to do to make the background, you are going to make some foil balls. Where's my paint? So you can put some paint. I would do two different plates if I was setting this up in the classroom. But I just want to show you guys the really cool um, texture that this makes. So, again, it's just foil balled up. But it makes these really cool prints. But look, you can like drag it and slide it. And it kind of looks like, like the wilderness or forest or, you know, kind of that like dark... You need a little bit more paint than I have, but it's really, really cool. They can drag it and it's, it just is a really cool, like something fun and different to paint with. And it makes really, really cool textures. You can see um, this one has a cool texture. Now, while it's wet, it's totally fine to do this while it's wet because I always, um, in my classroom, like, if we, like let's say we were doing this project, they wanted to do it and be done. Like it was really hard to go back and do like a day two of a project. So you just take this and they kind of like crinkle it up and they can take some glue. I don't have it up here, but take a little cup or a little bowl of like glue with a paintbrush and they can paint the glue on there and then they will put the cave and then kind of crumple the paper on it and they'll have to push it down. And again, it is totally fine to do this when the paint's wet because look, this one, the, there's paint on it, it's fine. It's a cave. Like it's going to have brown and black on it. It is no, no big deal. And then they can cut the little bear out or you can cut it out and then they can glue it on. 
Now, if they don't want to put this on there, they don't have to. If they want to put this like floating, it's fine too. Whatever they want to do. If they want to make the bear out of the cave, again, it's their work. I don't care. It's totally up to them how they want to make it. So do a little bear in the cave. But if you're doing polar animals, print it on white paper and you could use foil and use like blues and it could be an iceberg with the polar bear in the um in all the the arctic all right the last activity i got for you guys you ready so this one i will say this is not an open-ended art activity this is a craft but you know what there's a time and place for both in the classroom so if your students need to practice cutting, I love doing cutting crafts. So maybe we have this little hat, they can cut it out. Or if you have threes, you can cut it out. And then what they're gonna do is you're gonna put out a whole bunch of strips of paper and they are going to cut to make the hat. And then they can glue cotton balls on to fill it in. Now, if cutting is hard for them, you can give them bounce back scissors. And what bounce back scissors are is they bounce back open for them. So that way they have a little bit of support so they can still do the activity, but just with a little bit of help. Or if you have a friend who has weaker fine motor, they can cut, but their hand gets tired kind of halfway through the activity. Give them these when their hand gets tired instead of having a behavior and being mad and upset or leaving. You have know, some little friends, they quietly just walk away when they're done um hand them these and say you know what? when my hand's tired like when I got a ton of lamination that's how my hand feels use these so you can keep doing the activity but um this will this will be easier for your hand so give them these again they can start with these they can end with these we just call them bouncy scissors we anybody can use them anytime they want um so yeah and this hat is a freebie in the printables that you can grab too and when this makes just the cutest little bulletin board, and again, keep this. You can put this in their portfolio for a cutting, um, for cutting, like a cutting skill. Um, so yeah, but again, this isn't, this is not open-ended art. This is a craft. But that's okay. It's okay to have some crafts. We want a lot of open-ended art, but it's okay to have crafts sprinkled in a little bit too. Okay, so that is all of them that I have for you. So. Now, if you're thinking, I'm, I'm loving these winter crafts or w winter art ideas. Um, we did this for fall, so I had, did a whole video on fall art, open-ended art, and then I'll also do one for spring open-ended art, and I'll do one for summer open-ended art. And if there are any themes that you want me to do specifically, um, put those in the comments, and I can try and do videos and blog posts on those. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed all of these really, really fun winter, art activities and i hope you guys have have the best day night whenever you're watching so i hope you guys again have a great night and i will talk to you guys next time bye